Hello artists and welcome to Creativity Time with Julia Major. At Creativity Time, I show the tips and tricks, but ultimately you are the artist. If that sounds fun to you, I hope you like and subscribe. All right, today we're going to be doing foam printing with markers. If you watched my previous video on foam printing, you heard me say, there isn't really a great way to do foam printing with markers, you need to use paint. I was wrong. Never trust a teacher who isn't willing to learn. So I'm really excited to show you this technique. What you're going to need is markers, a scissors, some kind of styrofoam. You can find it on the top of egg trays. If you use that though, make sure to wash it because of salmonella. Or you can use a cucumber tray or takeout uh, container. And then you're also going to want to have a sponge some white paper, a ballpoint pen, especially one that doesn't write well is good, one that's like just um, difficult to get the ink out of is actually a good choice here, and then two kinds of other writing utensils. It really doesn't matter that much what, but you want them to be two different colors from each other. And that's it, let's get started. So you absolutely can draw your design directly on the styrofoam, like I showed in our other foam carving video. But if you'd like to work out your design a bit more first, here's a way that you can transfer your design over. I like to use two different colored pens. It really doesn't matter what kind of pen the first one is, as long as it's a different color. But the second one, you're going to want to have some kind of ballpoint pen. So I drew first in red, and now I'm going over it with the blue ballpoint. You're going to want to press because the whole point is to make the design show up in the styrofoam underneath. And I have taped this on here so that the paper won't slide on me as I'm carving. I'm not tracing the edge here. I could if I wanted that to be the design, but that was just to help me when I was figuring out the design to know where I should put things. Now I'm gonna peel off the design and I can see here that I have made it. If there's anywhere that I think needs some extra help, I can go back over it with a ballpoint pen again. I like to use a pen that doesn't mark especially well just to make sure I'm not adding extra ink onto this, but you can use your original ballpoint, that's fine. And it also helps you can check back in on your original drawing to help you with details if you need to, to know exactly what you want to do. The styrofoam is a little bit bouncy, so it can be tricky to carve at points. There's two basic motions. You can just carve, or you can add dots by pressing. Now we're gonna cut out our design. I went over almost everything twice, so I do really recommend that you do that. You're going to want to draw on your stamp. If you're going to use a light color like yellow, because it can get easily contaminated by the other colors, you're going to want to use that first and in sections before you come by with any other color. But for all other colors, you can go over each other and not really worry. So now we're going to wet the paper with the sponge so that it's glossy but not soaked. You want to do this after you've drawn on your stamp because if you do it before, it will definitely dry out um, before you're ready to print. I got a little bit of ink on there, but that's okay. Now that I've done that, I could put the stamp on top, but I always prefer to put the stamp on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. Put this on and then press. Once it's on there, you do not want to move it or it will blur. So this is what happens when your paper is too wet. So you want your sponge to be wet but not dripping. 
getting big droplets on your paper is going to lead to a mess. So make sure it's wet but not dripping. And then you're going to swipe in two directions. First vertically, and then horizontally. I'm actually going to go over it one more time because it's looking a little dry there. Okay. Now, I always prefer to put my stamp underneath rather than over, so I'm going to put it underneath the wet side. And press lightly. Once you start pressing, you don't want it to move because then it can smear. This is what happens when your paper is too dry. You want to make sure that it's not soaking, but that it is wet and glossy. All right, you're going to want to make sure you wet your paper after you've drawn on your stamp because you don't want it to dry out. You need your sponge to make the paper glossy, but for your sponge to not be dripping. I have had some struggles with this. I've had to engage and persist. Don't give up if your first print or your second print or even your third print doesn't work out. Try again. You still have the stamp. So you're going to go in the one direction vertically and then you're going to go horizontally. Don't use the rough side of a sponge. Use the soft side. I think I need it a little wetter than this so let's you can see some white spots here. All right, going to put my stamp underneath. And then gently press. Make sure to get every part of your stamp and to not move it. Now I'm going to lift. And voila, there's my stamp. Um, you'll notice that the colors in your print are brighter than on your initial stamp. So bear that in mind when you're coloring. Artists, when you saw those examples of too wet and too dry, those were real. I had to engage and persist today. I had to try again. Don't give up if your first artwork doesn't work, especially with printmaking, because one of the really fun things about printmaking is you still have that stamp. You can use it again. Thank you so much for coming to Creativity Time with Julia Major. I hope you like and subscribe. And until I see you again, have a very colorful day.